Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It's me, Jasmine, the Buffet Witch, but you already knew that because that's what it says on the welcome mat. Welcome to my first collab video. I'm so excited to be doing this. I am joined by the queen of collabs herself, Miss Erica Conger. Hi, Erica, you are literally the best. We are doing a Throwback Thursday, and we are going to be using the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop Pistachio Palette. Now, you know I had to go with green because I love green. I have pistachio, I have bubble gum, and I have cherry on top um although i love green the bubble gum is my favorite because those deep saturated blues they get me they get me but this green palette is absolutely amazing so let's go ahead and do a look and while i'm doing this look erica and i came up with just 10 questions to answer so you can get to know us a little bit so hopefully i can multitask and talk and answer questions concisely without running off on a tangent whilst doing my eyeshadow so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then i will tell you what's on the face at the end of the video okay so let's get started first things first i don't know why i didn't do this in the first place we gotta prime ourselves so the first five questions are just uh really kind of makeup related and i picked those they're very easy and she picked the last five questions which are more like about us you know get to know us since she's done so many of these videos, I had a really hard time coming up with questions for like that part, so I let her handle it. Um, and she has some pretty thought-provoking questions. And one, I actually don't, oh, I do have an answer to. I answered all of them before I did this because I you know, wanted to be prepared. All right, so I'm just priming my eyes with Juvia's Place Eye Prep by Prime, and let's get in here. <clears throat> so the first question I have is if you could create a makeup makeup item what would it be for me it's definitely going to be eyeshadow and i would make a teal and purple eyeshadow palette i don't know what i would call it and maybe i'll actually try to do this in real life but teal and purple are just two of my favorite colors i really love blue and i tend to do blue and green together so i was like you know what this way I get a little bit of all of that. So teal is just that beautiful, happy medium of blue and green. And I love the depth of um, teals with purples. So for me, ideally, I would totally do an eyeshadow palette and it would be bright. Uh, mine would have a black, of course. It would have a white, of course, but just teal and purple. So maybe that's something, you know, maybe that's something for the future for me to attempt, okay? So question two, is what's the most essential part of your makeup routine? For me, it is setting powder, okay? Setting the face properly is something that took me a long time to figure out. And it's pretty much like just common sense. But sometimes when I'm playing with my makeup, like if the eyes are my focus, I'm not too hyper aware on other areas like not makeup related, but just to give you this, like some context of how I can completely ignore a certain part. My best friend was the first person to ever pluck my eyebrows and she did a glorious job. Oh, those virgin brows, they were so bushy and cray cray. And when she did that first pluck, we, that's what we call fresh. Then was some fresh brows and I already have chronic bitch face. So then she did my brows and it was like, I had to watch my face because I looked like I was about to tear something up, okay? But when she did it, first I pretended like I hated it because I always got to keep her on her toes, right? And then I was like, oh my God, did I just like not look up there? I must have looked at my face and been like, I look nice. Because <laughs> them bushy things were some bushy things. But for me, setting powder has really come up and changed the game for me. Now I really focus on making sure my face is properly set and it just pulls everything together, okay? So let's go into the eyeshadows. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if we should just go basic or if I should try to make this special because it's a, it's a collab with Erica. Hmm. Well, working with what we have, let's just go ahead and get some crease colors, some transition colors on. I'm gonna start with the color Nutty here like a mid-tone green. I love this palette so much. Um, are you guys checking for BH Cosmetics now that they're owned by Revolution? I don't know that I am. I don't ever go to the Revolution site, so I don't know how else I would get BH, but I'm just worried they done messed with the Krabby Patty formula, if you know what I mean. So yeah, let's just pop this on. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and do both eyes for you just because we're answering questions so this is going to be a lengthy video I'm sorry not that anyone has complained but you know sometimes I go in thinking let me do this quickly and it just never happens that way it is another super gloomy day guys it's raining outside I love it if I didn't have to go to work oh my god I will put on my robe kiss me some tea and just vibe out to these cloudy vibes okay anyways so crease color all right so what was that question two so question three what's the last makeup skill you learned that created your current uh your current routine um and again for me very boring it's going to be setting powders so i had a really weird habit of never setting right here or above my brows and then i would take pictures and be like why is it so gooey looking up there it just look gooey you know and it's because i am an oily combo girl and when I, um, well, actually I have a dehydrated skin type, but when I'm hydrated, my skin is combo oily. So I just get the earls right in cheer. Okay, right in cheer. And it could really just make it look like my face was melting. And I don't know why I never looked there. Again, I look nice. I just ignored it. Um, so now setting powder is just like, ooh. I actually went from just setting my under eyes with the Derma Blend to setting my entire face with it. And it has been working gloriously, don't you think? Come on now. Yes, you know what it is. So definitely, definitely setting powder. Okay. All right. So we've got our crease color on. And I feel like we've got a little bit more on my right eye than my left eye. So let's get some symmetry going. All right. There we go. And now I'm going to do the deepest shade, of course. But I think I want to keep this deep shade kind of like angled out. A little bit crease-like. Um, or um, liner-like. Not exactly like we're going to do liner. But I want it to not really be on the inside here. So let me just focus for a second. See if I can do what it is that I'm talking about. So I'm using like a smaller kind of paddly brush just to kind of get her where I want her. Ooh, see, teals. This is a super dark green, but it's, it's giving some teal tees, okay. Now I'm just going in with that same blending brush that we used for the first shade and we're just going to swirl in circular motions in our outer part of the eye here. Not really taking it down, not really taking it out too far. I just want to keep that color there. All right. Pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, so yeah, setting powder for me is definitely like the last piece of my current makeup routine that has really felt like okay this is something that i'm going to do and that i do every single time i do my makeup um and then fourth question is do you ever feel uncomfortable wearing makeup i do sometimes i feel and i used to wear makeup to work every single day uh, just recently, I started wearing makeup again because I'm a I'm a mid shift, second shift, third shifter. That was a lot of shifts, but uh, I start work at 5 p.m. and I come home at about one. Well, I get off at 1:30, so I'm home about 1:45 too. And I was like, you know, I want to wear makeup. I used to never go anywhere without wearing makeup, and I just wanted to look nice. When I worked third shift, I was so tired, girl. I didn't care how I looked. I'm here. That's all, that's all I can offer you, okay? I'm here, I'm coherent, I am competent enough to poke people and draw blood. Don't ask me to look nice whilst I do it. We're wearing masks, who cares, right? But now that we don't have to wear masks, like we do with patients, but we don't have to in all of the areas of the hospital. And I said, you know what? Not every day, but sometimes I wanna wear makeup, I wanna look nice. And I find that sometimes now I feel uncomfortable if I have a fully matte face and if my brows are done at the same time. So sometimes I will, cause I usually wear a headscarf to work. Mostly I wear my headscarves cause I just like them. 
and sometimes I wear my head scarves just to keep my hair out of my face and to keep it down and tamed okay because I do these big old weaves and if I don't want to look too done I will just skip the brows and then my my head scarf will come and kind of cover half of my brows so you can't even tell if they're not done um but yeah sometimes I feel uncomfortable and it could be because we got fluorescent lights fluorescent lights are not very nice to textured skin okay and I don't know then they, there's nobody else around me wearing this much makeup and just and it's just a little bit of uncomfort or discomfort just enough for me to go hmm but not enough for me to ever stop you know but yeah every once in a while I feel uncomfortable when I'm not at work going out in the world I never feel uncomfortable wearing makeup girl look I am giving you a show you better enjoy it okay I know I am got my veronica on this is veronica as well whenever it's big and poofy poofalicious i call her veronica but this is my curly dude okay so yeah every once in a while i feel uncomfortable all right so we've got our crease and we are blended beautifully i love the way this formula works together we are going to go onto the lower lash line i'm using the same brush i'm just going to clean it off with my little color switchy dude and i'm going to go into the second lighter shade this one here which is called guilty pleasure and she is going to go along the lower lash line a little bit of a soft formula soft okay so right under the lower lash line not too much you know oops That's the wrong shade I have to tell you about these brushes. Oh, these brushes are so good. Okay. A little bit of a mint number. All right, so last question that's makeup related. What are your three top Holy Grail products? For me, this is gonna be so easy, so simple. Uh, you should know. Well, you probably don't, but now you're about to know. My top three Holy Girl products are as follows. We've already talked about her two other times. The Warm Saffron Derma Blend Powder. Holy Grail, I am, arch, like, we're only about halfway done, and I'm prepping to my next haul from Ulta. I will be buying another one. I should, shit, I might buy two, okay? Because that's how much I love her. And then... Holy Grail status since the day I found it. The LA Girl uh, Pro Color Fixing Mixing Pigment in Blue. I recently did my first haul from Shop Miss A and I picked up four of their tiny little color mixers. So I'm gonna see what the difference is and if it's if it gives me the same look and those the same, like if it messes with the finishes of my products because this one is $8.99 and those are like a dollar or something, $2 each and I got four little little droppers okay but this stays in my collection I have four of these unopened and when I make my next purchase from Ulta I will be buying at least three more I like to keep these on hand because I need them for most of my foundations okay and the third holy grail product is a lipstick do you know her you know her we've just been talking about her a lot you already know Juvia's Place Sheba let me tell you why this is a, oh I'll tell you later why this is a holy grail and why something happened today that just affirmed to me that this needs to be I holy holy grail holiest of grails okay <laughs> dramatic I know but that's how it goes when you when you find something you love okay so many of the things that I love disappear so I get gung-ho about my holy grails especially if I can still get them come on now <laughs> you spoil me all right so anyways so that's that mid color, that mid green in Guilty Pleasure. Do we need a little bit of light? Let's try. Is that okay? Is that too much light? Be blinded by science? Turn down just a just a squint. Is that okay? What do you think? Yeah? That's what we have so far. So let's get into these shims. Now you know what I'm gonna do. Dark shim on the outside, light shim in the mid middle. Boring, I know. Basic. You've got my formula, you know what I'm doing, all right? So, we are going to go in. I'm gonna use this one. Come on, brush. This is called Treat. And she's gonna go on the outer portion of the lid here. 
And you know what? Let's keep her right on the edge of that teal, that darker shade. Let's not cover that shade up because it's pretty. shade dessert looks like this and that's going to fill in the rest of the eye So let's get into Erica's questions. And her first question is, what do you love to do with your free time that's non-makeup related? For me, I love to write. Um, I've been writing my own stories since I could write. I like to write, um, I don't really, I'm terrible at genres and everything, music, books. I, I'm just terrible at genres. I bleed into everything. But primarily, I'm with the vampire werewolf gang, okay? I love a good vampire. I love werewolves. I like a big bad, but what I dislike are big bads that show up and do nothing. And I hate when everyone gets their way. I hate it. I'm a little bit of a torturer. I want, I want someone to be tortured. Okay, so I'm actually going in with the darkest color, Crunch, the darkest shimmer. And we're just going to deepen up our um, outer here. Yeah, 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 that's what we need. I'm sure you'll be able to see this better in pictures. But yeah, I don't like for everyone to get their way. Or, um, like, I have one story that has been in my mind, and I, I have many drafts of it. But my character is like all powerful. She can, she's like a copy and paste. Like she gets attacked by you and somehow bodily fluids get mixed. She gets all of your powers with all of your strengths, none of your weaknesses. Sounds great, right? She don't know how to use none of it. I'm gonna have her amass all this power and she doesn't, she can't use it. She doesn't know how to use it because it's not her naturally. I hate when, you know, I read this book. I'm not gonna say who it's by. Um, I read this book by this, uh, well, they're a TikToker, but I saw the, I saw it on Instagram, and I read one of the books, and the character, like, in a week, went from being a fairy to a half-breed fairy vampire, and just took out a whole army of vampires, and it's like, in a week, you learned how to do all the things. You learn how to bite someone and not kill them even though you just now are getting the thirst. Like, stuff like that. I mean, I'll read it, but no, we gotta have a little bit more, a little bit more complexities, you know? So I like to write. I like to dance as well. Um, I actually am doing and going back to Shakti movement. So a little bit of like fusion, fusion belly dance, very tribal, very woman, very Shakti and Shiva. Uh, very just very hippie and shimmery and shim shims yes that's that's what I'm doing and I can't wait to get back to it um and I also love to read yes I love to read um a second question is what family member are you the most like I'm like my sister salty my sister salt her name is I was to think when I say her name because my best friend told me I say her name Kim k-y-o-m instead of Kim if I have a patient or I know someone named Kim, it just comes out Kim. But for my sister, Kim. But I'm most like my sister, Kim. Literally, people think we're twins. We do not look alike. We don't think we look alike at all. She's almost two years older than me. But people will literally tell us we are twins. Okay, sir, because you know our life. It's fine. Um, and we are just both quirky and goofy. We could be so stupid 
stupid, but we're artistic. We both love um, singing. We love writing. We She has a YouTube channel as well. She does kind of like uh, mommy vlogs. Um, and yeah, we just are ridiculous. If you've seen Buffy, and you know the scene where Xander has a twin, or he gets turned into a twin, but it's actually his real life twin. Every once in a while we do that random laugh, like we catch something and we'll just giggle together. Um, and we used to go to Barnes and Nobles and talk in accents. And we would just sit there talking about the books and be like, oh my God, this is a really nice book. My accents are terrible. They're gonna slur into everything, so just deal with it. But we'd be like, oh my God, have you read this book? Have you seen that? And one time we was doing it so well and for so long, this lady interrupted us and was like, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you. I just wanted to know, can I ask where you're from? And we said, Racine. And we just walked away. <laughs> We're goofy. We love it. So I'm most like my sister, Salty. And uh, yeah. Uh, question three is, if you could have one dessert for the rest of your life, what would it be? Y'all ever get those itches that just kind of like, ping pong around your face what's happening come on man oh all right it's over um caramel ice cream yeah oh caramel ice cream or butterscotch dilly bars yum a lot of people don't like the butterscotch i love butterscotch hate cherry don't like chocolate and my husband it's one of the many many times i knew he was the one he likes the butterscotch too i was like what? are we a match made in heaven or what I'm looking for an eyeliner, guys. I feel like we should do eyeliner. I want to do pink. Break this up. You know what? Let's just leave it alone. No liner. But yeah, butterscotch dilly bars or caramel ice cream. So I guess ice cream would be my dessert of choice for eternity. Question four is what movie character do you think you have the most in common with? This one was tricky for me because I like I've watched a lot of things, but I don't really like watching TV all that much. I hate having to learn new characters and all this stuff. And then if my character dies or is stupid, I get pissed, you know, so I'm always the last to the party. Like, I think I was the last person to watch Bridgerton. Yeah, Bridgerton. I it even took a really long time to watch that one, but I think I was the last person to watch Queen Charlotte, and then I was like, everyone else a sobbing mess on the last episode. But if I had to say who I'm the, like a character I kind of resonate with, it would be Queen Latifah's character from Last Holiday. First of all, it is just an amazing feel-good movie. Second of all, Queen Latifah is my celebrity mom. She just seems like she is the nicest woman, the sweetest person, and I live for her acting. I love anything she's in. I love Queen Latifah so much. She's just so amazing. But oddly, I don't actually know any of like her songs. That's not my era, but uh, I love Queen Latifah. I love that movie. It's so funny and it's just such a feel good movie. Like my best friend and I, we watch it very often. And each time we, we do the part where they were catcalling Sean, who was played by LL Cool J. I don't really like LL Cool J, but whatever. And they were up at the top looking at him and her little coworker was like, you're just afraid of someone getting a hold of all this booty. And then she looked at Sean, she said, mm -mm, he can hold my booty. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> oh, I love that movie. But yeah, I feel the most, like I resonate with her because she's a person who wants more. She wants more, but she doesn't, she doesn't, she hesitated to, to care for herself first. She hesitated to find her wants and needs worthy and always thought that she would have time. And because she always thought she would have time, she just dipped her little toe into things. And you know, she saved and she hustled and she hustled, but she never gave time to herself. I see myself in that um, in the past. And sometimes I still do it. I, I put myself last and I just say later, later, later. And I'm trying to be more like her towards the middle and end of the movie. You know, because when I do give to myself, it feeds other people, you know, and then we're all happy. So, um, and maybe that was all BS. I don't know, but I love that movie.
<laughs> so if you haven't seen it last holiday with queen latifah and ll cool j it is a good ride all right so i got a little mascara on my lower lash line we're just gonna let that dry a bit and then i will flake it away but that is the eyeshadow look i think we do need a brow bone highlight and we're just going to use the lightest shimmer here. Just a touch of it. Oh, yeah, we need an inner. This one's more lime-like. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, though. Ooh. She a little loud. She came in with some boom pow. Okay. All right. She said, give me the spotlight. All right. We're going to pop that into the inner corner as well. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Okay. And the last question from Erica is five favorite or what are the your five favorite items of or uh, yeah, articles of clothing in your closet? Mine pretty simple, okay? One of my favorite pieces is my flip-flop 90. You remember this from my old <laughs> our old house when I was making those reels with the makeup by Mario mixed or metal palette or whatever it is. I love this 90 it's just comfy i got it from like walmart or something i don't know i've had it for forever but this is just a wall or a flip-flop 90 and i love sir another piece of clothing i love my golden girl shirt i love the golden girls my wife and i are planning to do a golden girls podcast we have a ton of different um topics to talk about whether we're just watching for viewing pleasure or really breaking it down comparing the times trying to get the storylines together because whoever was writing it was smoking some cracks because no, nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. The stories overlap and it's like, did you forget the last episode where Miles was in the witness protections and told you he had a whole different name and now in this next, the very next episode, he is Miles again? Like, get your stuff together. Okay, so Golden Girls, I got Golden Girls socks. I got a Golden Girls cup. I got Golden Girls uh magnets i have a sophia chia pet i named my car dorothy's Bornick because she big she gray she large and in charge okay and she rude <laughs> all right so i love the girls and girls and i love my shirt another favorite of mine is this orange shirt i actually have a cream colored one and a black one these are my favorite because these were my going out shirts when i was younger okay i'm 35 so this is like early 20s i've had this for so long this is from charlotte roos the other two are from body central that store has been gone for a long long time i don't know what they made these out of but a decade later these are still in pristine pristine condition and they're just my adult shirts. Like, I feel like every time I wear them, I look gorgeous, a little funky, because the fabric makes you a little musty. But you look good. Just don't sniff too deeply, <laughs> you know? So that's a favorite. Again, I got a cream and a black one, and I love them. I just never, every time I go through my collection and my, my closet, I can never get rid of them. Um, another favorite, I'm an old woman at heart, which is why I love the Golden Girls. I need to get a little old lady chain for my glasses, too. I love me a good sweater, okay? I call them sweaters. This is a beautiful sweater. And as you see over here, I got a green one. And there's a cream one under the green. They're not the same, like, texture as this. But I got them all at the same time. Y'all, this is a beautiful sweater. Beautiful. I get compliments every single time I wear it. I found these at the Dollar General. They was $3 each. Look, get yourself a bargain. Get yourself a bargain. I've had these for, like, five years. Okay? Okay? <laughs> and the last favorite is something I got from my Mima. Because, like I said, I'm an old woman. It's my red robe my big salty in this oh your robe was green never mind <laughs> but yes this is a big fleece robe it cooks you it's magic you get toasty and you just fall asleep and you don't even know it is the most comfortable thing i love this robe so much thank you me ma for giving it giving it to me you is the best all right that's it that's that's the questions that's the eye look what do we think Basic, simple, pretty, green, gorgeous, right? Yes, 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 yes. So real quick, like, I'm just going to shuck away the uh, mascara that got on um, my lower lash line. Not too bad, not too bad. Let me just, where that brush at, girl? Oh, you over there. I'm just going to reestablish some color there because we got to take our photos. Oh, 
We gotta get this fallout too, girl. Great, I said fallout girl, and now I got fallout boy in my head. And I'm just gonna pop that green back on here. All right, I'm just gonna dust away the excess. And real quick, like, let me tell you what I've got on the face. So the foundation today is the L'Oreal True Match <clears throat> uh, Nude Hyaluronic Tinting Serum. Again, I use the shade 8.5-9.5, which is medium deep. My concealer is still the J-Cat Beauty Cappuccino. We are getting towards the end of this. Love this concealer so much. Our setting powder, again, you already know, is the Warm Saffron by Dermablend. She is a banger. The perimeter of my face is set with the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop in the shade Mocha. The blush today, I used my liquid blush from Juvia's Place in Coral Rose. We set her with the orange blush from my Tammy X Revolution palette. This is the Paradise Glow face palette. I set my blush with this color. Our bronzer is the Minted Cosmetics Yacht Life Bronzer. Our highlight, did I put on highlight? Oh, I didn't put no highlight on. Sometimes you don't need it or you forget. Tomato, tomato, right? I think I just forgot. Um, our lip today is the OG combo that I have. I'm saying OG like I've had it for forever, but it is my favorite combo, which is going to be the Nima Tang. <laughs> oh my God. The Nima Tang li um, lip liner in chocolate chip with my minted cosmetics peach please the reason i'm whining and whimpering is because my chocolate chip liner that's all we have left <laughs> but there's a reason why sheba is the holy grail it's basically the same color so i no longer need to even worry about this so i'm pretty happy that i'm panning it that is almost done and so so happy that i figured out the sheba is its equivalent so all is good in the neighborhood all right so oh in the brows today i switched up because i um finished my nyx brow gel in i think it was either black or uh cappuccino no what do they use what color do they always have it be I can't remember. I think it was black, but it was a dark brown. Um, and I had it in a little Blistex tub, but it was no longer applying properly because it's old and I've, I've had it for a long time and it dries out a bit. So today instead, I busted out my brow pomade from LA Girl, and this is in soft black. All right. So that's what the brows are doing. And that is the finished face, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Erica, thank you so much for doing this collab with me. You're amazing. And if you have not seen Erica, her channel will be linked down below. Please go over there, show her some love, tell her the buffet which sent you. And if you are coming over from Erica's, hi, welcome, Get, grab a chair, grab a brush, and let's play. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did. It's been me, Jasmine the Buffet Witch, but you already knew that because it's on my palette that I've made, which is a teal and purple, purple thing. So, but I will see you in the next video, which will be pretty soon. And until then, you guys take care. Bye.